Hey guys, and in this short tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how we can add some liquid um, droplets on the outside of our glass. So here's a scene that I've already prepared. We've got a glass here. It's like cocktail glass with some ice cubes in it, um, some bubbles and some liquid. Um, so what we're going to do is add the water droplets to the outside of this glass to make it look like uh, there's some condensation or something on it. So it's actually pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to switch over into solid view. I'm going to jump over to another layer here. So I have another layer there which has our ice cubes on it. I'm just going to go to another layer and I'm going to create a uh, icosphere. And a number of subdivisions we can knock down to one or maybe ah, we'll bring it up to two. So it'll be um, a nice and smooth. And then <clears throat> tab into edit mode, go to vertex select, hit O, so we go to proportional editing, and we're going to grab the top vertex of our object, and we'll drag that up, and you'll see that creates this tear type of shape, this teardrop shape, um, which is going to be part of our liquid. Um, so we need to give this a material, which will be the glass material, the same one that we used for um, the, the actual glass object. Then we're going to create a copy of this, and we'll call this um, droplet. And we're going to change the index of refraction down to 1.3. Um, and that's basically all we're going to do for our droplet. Scale it down a little bit, because the droplet would be a lot smaller than this in comparison to our glass. You see, we want to actually get our droplet about the size of what it would be on the glass. So we'll scale that down. It wouldn't be that big. It would just be small water droplets on the outside of here. OK, so um, there's our one. Now, we could uh, copy this and place lots of them in random places around the glass there. That would be a little bit tedious and tiresome to do. So instead, we're going to use an emitter. Um, so we'll select the glass, go to our physics here, we'll add a new particle system, and we'll change it to hair. Now you can see that we've got hair growing out of our glass in all sorts of funny directions. Um, so we're going to now come down to our display, uh, no render, and we change it from path to object. And we're going to select our bubble object. Now you can see we have little bubbles on the outside of the glass here. However, they're a little bit uniform. It looks more like a pattern of studs on the glass rather than um, what we want it to actually look like. So we can change some of those things. Click Advance there. We'll um, choose random instead of jittered. So jittered, you see they're all in these nice lines. If we go to random, then they're randomly placed around our glass. Now, we don't want them on this top area around the lip of the glass there. That looks a little bit odd. So one way of solving that is to duplicate a section of the glass. So we're going to remove this particle system for now. We'll grab hold of the glass, tab into edit mode, and we're going to select the faces only which we want these particles to be on. So I'm going to go to a front view, and we'll hit B for box select. So I'm going to select all of these faces here. So the liquid on the glass is only going to be on these faces. It won't appear on the upper area there. So it's only going to be lower down here. Um, so once we've done that, we can go Shift D to duplicate, Enter, and then P to separate by selection. Now once we've done that, I see we have glass 01. This is going to be our droplet emitter. OK, so we can tap back out of edit mode and come into object mode, go back to solid. So now we have this around the outside of our glass, but we don't want that to be visible, which and we can turn that off in the particle system. So again, create a new particle system with our droplet emitter selected, choose hair, 
and in um, the render, you're going to not render the emitter, so uncheck that, so the emitter will not be rendered. And we go to object, and again, we select our bubbles. The same as before, go to advanced options, and we'll turn this on to random. So they're randomly distributed over the surface of the glass. Now, if we go to rendered view, You'll see that now we have these droplets on the outside. It isn't, however, looking that great yet. So there's a few things we need to do with this. Um, so one is going to be the orientation. We need to set up the orientation of these droplets because right now, if you look at them, they are pointing outwards from the glass. We don't have the droplet shape. Um, so we need to turn on rotation and instead of velocity we're going to use object X, object Y just to get the orientation correct and we're also going to increase our hair length so that these objects actually stick on the outside of the Last there. We're going to increase the number of objects and we're also going to need to scale these droplets down a little bit. They're a little bit large right now, so we can make those smaller. by selecting our original droplet object and we'll scale it down to some more reasonable size Now we've got several other parameters that we can edit in here. So we can change the number. So obviously by adjusting the number here, it will increase the number of water droplets we have. So you, know, you don't want to go overboard on this. It's a subtle effect. So probably just maybe 404 would be enough there. Um, you can check if you want to use the modifier stack or not. So that will... Um, utilize additional vertices that are being generated by our subsurf modifier. So I'm going to turn that on. The hair dynamics we don't need to concern ourselves with. The velocity, again, we don't need to really concern ourselves with. The object rotation, we're going to leave just on object Y so that it rotates the object to the correct orientation. Um, Our display we can leave as it is and that is pretty much all that we need to do here in our particle system now ah, I selected the wrong object there we're using bubble it should be droplet Where is that? Let me select this object again. Icosphere, we need to change this to be called droplet. All right. And rather than bubble, we use droplet. There we go. Okay. That's better. Back to rotation. Make sure we got this rotated correctly. Now we've got the droplet on the outside of the glass. Okay, so we'll go back to our camera view, back to rendered,
And you should see now we have the water droplet effect on the outside of our glass there. So you can play around with this, adjust the number of water droplets you have, and then um, to add a little bit more realism, you may want one that seems to have run and has left a bit of a streak. So what we can do for those uh, kind of individual ones, so you've got these more randomly positioned ones over the glass there. Um, we can actually model one which has this streak to it. So come back out of solid view there. We'll duplicate this object. Actually, our original one there, we can move out of the way so it won't be in our scene. And now this droplet, if we tab into edit mode, we can stretch out turn off our proportional editing and then I'm going to make a loop cut we'll select all these edges here drag those edges up so this will make something that looks like a longer droplet running down the side of the glass drag this up get a hold of these edges again bring those edges up okay so now we have that tap back out of edit mode mm, have something a bit strange going on at the back of this we need to drag these up as well Okay, and then we can position this on our glass. So this is going to look more like a droplet that's running down the side. Um, so if we go now to a rendered view, See, so I have that droplet there, it's slightly larger than the others, and it looks like it's it's actually running down the side of the glass. It's leaving this bit of a streak behind it, which adds just another element of realism to this. Now, also some of these other bubble objects here, um, sorry, these um, droplet objects are looking a little bit uniform. They're all kind of the same size, and that detracts a little bit from the realism of the whole thing so what I'm going to actually do is select um, I'll duplicate this one that we just created or no, just select both of them and we're going to make these into a group so we'll group these objects together so create new group and this group of objects we're going to call droplets. So now we'll go back over to our emitter, our hair emitter, and now instead of object, we're going to change to group and we're going to choose the droplets group. 
And what that should do now is make a, you can see here, it's now got a combination. We haven't always got the same droplet. It's randomly distributed the new droplet that we just created together with the other one. So the more different droplet shapes you create and add to that group, the more different droplets you're going to get over the surface of your glass. So we'll come back to the camera view and we'll go back to rendered. And now you've got something that looks a little bit more realistic because not every droplet on the outside is the same size. We've now got some different sizes, different shapes, randomly distributed over the surface of our glass. So all that remains to do then is do our final render. So we come over to our render settings. I'm going to up the um, sampling to final. So let's say we're going to take 30 samples and we'll hit the render button. And we'll just wait for that to render out and see our finished result. So there we have our final render. You can see we have our nice glass with the liquid inside and the bubbles and the straw and the water droplets on the outside. Now, if you want to learn how to create the glass and how to model the liquid inside and the bubbles, I recommend you go over and check out my other tutorial on modeling a beer glass where I cover those basic um, modeling procedures and you can apply those to any shaped glass or any type of liquid that you want. Um, the straw is pretty straightforward. It was just a cylinder that's been extruded out and I've applied a basic um, glossy and diffuse mix node um, to here. Um, so if you're not familiar with how to do those things, then check out my other Blender tutorials. And I hope that you found this particular tutorial useful for you. Um, there's one other thing that I'm going to add to this, which is some ice cubes. So if we go back over to our 3D view, and if we select another layer here, I actually have these ice cubes. So I'm going to combine those also now into our um, final render. And I'm just going to render out another one with these ice cubes and you'll be able to see the difference. So um, this was our first render. I'm just going to save that. And then we'll render out another one with the ice cubes as well. Save this and we'll come over to uh, render. Make sure we've got all of our layers turned on. 3D view. Yes, okay, so we hit render. We'll render out again. And at the end of this, we'll see the output and the difference that adding the ice cubes um, makes. So I'm gonna cover how I made these ice cubes in another tutorial um, that will be coming up here on the YouTube channel. So be sure to check that out. Um, by hitting the subscribe button so you can keep up to date with uh, all my latest tutorials here for Blender and Final Cut Pro. Here's a comparison between the two, that's uh, with the ice cubes and without. I think you'll agree that the addition of the ice cubes really helps to just finish things off, makes it look a little bit more realistic. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create those ice cubes.